Greetings, Ms. Story Mystery here with another collection of mysteries and oddities from around the web. This evening, I will be starting out with one of my own personal true stories. Enjoy! I lived in a haunted house, but my daughter experienced the most activity. We moved into this nice little old three-bedroom home when she was around five. Whenever I was alone in the house, there were often times I would feel as though I was being watched. It was an eerie feeling, but I never felt threatened. My daughter, however, was very much afraid of what she would see at night. I never told anyone about my feelings of being watched, and my daughter never told me of her experiences until we both experienced something late one night, a year or two after we'd moved in. I was sound asleep when I suddenly woke up to a man's voice yelling at me to wake up. My eyes bolted open, but I was unable to move. I couldn't move my arms. I couldn't turn over or sit up. I glanced around the dark room and saw my daughter sitting cross-legged on the foot of my bed. I could see that she was just sitting there, staring at the bedroom door. I couldn't move my head but I moved my eyes toward the doorway to see that the door was open and a dark figure was standing there. It was tall with a masculine build and it just stood there and my daughter just stared at it. I wasn't able to move or talk so I just watched. Eventually, I must have fallen back to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, my daughter was there asleep beside me. I assumed that she must have climbed into bed with me during the night, and the events of the night before were just a dream. After she awoke, however, she immediately asked me if I saw the scary man watching us last night. Chills immediately ran down my arms, and I asked her to tell me more. She said that this was the second time she had seen the man who watched us when we slept. She also told me that every night she would see small, black figures peeking at her from around her open doorway. She said that she was too afraid to tell me before. There was a really neat new age store in town, so I went over and talked to the owner. She was this lovely Wiccan woman who gave me some tips to try to help protect the house. I placed crystals around, saged the house, placed salt along the window sills, and so on. My daughter didn't see the man again, and the small figures watching her from the doorway didn't happen as frequently. We moved to a new home not too long after that, but she still remembers those incidents at that house very well. My husband and I for a time slept in separate rooms. He would often come into the room that I was in in the mornings to get clothes or socks. I would be aware that he was in the room, but just ignored it because I didn't want to wake up. Then, a few times, it seemed like he was just standing there. I woke up to the awareness that someone was standing there. Of course, it had to be my husband. It pissed me off mildly. I dozed back off. It was no big deal. After one particular episode, I was very upset because my husband had apparently been standing there for some time and I thought he was supposed to be at work already. I opened my eyes, and there was a man at the end of my bed. I literally screamed and jumped up, but just like that, he was gone. I confronted my husband about a lot of those times I thought it was him, and it turns out it wasn't him. I ended up divorcing for many reasons, but the man still stuck around. I don't really get a sense of malevolence or even that it's sleep paralysis, because I wake up and can control my body. Parents, you know when you're asleep and your kid comes in your room wanting something and you know they're there before opening your eyes? It's exactly like that. I have sat up or opened my eyes many, many times expecting to see one of my kids, only to see a man. It's the same man every single time. Tall, slim, dark hair kind of an impish look to him. He's actually quite handsome. His features are quite pleasant, smiling mildly. Over the years, he scared the shit out of me though. If this is a recurring dream, it sucks. 
I've noticed that he's been slowly moving from the end of my bed up to the side near my head. There is nothing like opening your eyes and looking right beside your head expecting to see a five-year-old child and then seeing a pair of legs that go up and you see this man looming over you and having that vision survive even for a flash after switching the light on. I swear I'm going to have a heart attack one day. The last time I saw him, it did something I'd never seen him do before. He was right near the head of the bed again, but this time, when I opened my eyes, it was like he'd been waiting for me, and he leaned his face in until it was literally eye to eye with me. He had a huge grin on his face, and his face was maybe six inches away from my face. I screamed and scurried away, turned on all the lights. It was terrifying. Again, I don't get any sense of malevolence, but being a single woman alone, it's very much a sense of why is there a man in my house and where is my machete for me? I don't know if it means anything or makes any difference, but I've actually sat there and talked, especially after the last time, and said that if anyone wants my attention, that's okay, but this is not the way to do it. You're scaring me. I haven't really had any scary problems since, and have gone around six months without an incident since then. The thing is, too, my grandma apparently had a man as well. Not quite the same way, but she wasn't someone to lie or over-dramatize things, and she'd seen this man watching her in broad daylight in her home. Similar thing, thought it was an intruder, didn't question it until he was gone. I wish she was alive so I could ask her more. I do remember somewhat similar things as a kid, but I remember it being more benign and positive. I would have someone sleep with me in my bed, only to find there was nobody there. It felt like someone was. I just thought my stuffies came alive at night or something because I was a kid. I'm trying to choose to think of it as some sort of benign and possibly hereditary guardian if any of this stuff is real. I have had some terrible, terrible things happen to me in my life, and a consistent theme in my dreams and my sleep is me feeling completely loved, and I wake up feeling loved even when nobody in my life really loves me. I don't know if I believe any of this stuff, but if there is anything that does that for me, I am forever grateful. Either that, or my brain is really good at fulfilling my subconscious need in my sleep, in which case, thank you, brain. I used to believe that the paranormal wasn't real until this experience. I had always wondered, and my mom claimed to have seen things, but I was pretty skeptical. I went to my grandparents' house in California after I had just turned 20, it was a sunny, warm day, and everything was totally normal. We had gone to a dog park to wander around and came back for an afternoon nap. The house is two stories, one on the first level and a basement that doubles as an entire second floor. The basement is where we slept. Now most people think, oh god, the basement. But this was a house we had been in since we were little to come visit, and the basement looked like a normal first floor of a house, just with no windows. There was always a light on in the room, even when we were sleeping, and it genuinely just was like a normal bottom floor, not a stereotypical basement. Had a bathroom and everything. In the room we all bunkered down in, there were three beds. One for my parents on one side of the room with the closet door next to them, and two on the other side of the room for me and my sisters. Everyone laid down to take a nap, but I didn't want to so I started reading with the lamp on. It illuminated everything in the room, and it all felt super peaceful and calm to have everyone snoring a bit around me. And then, of course, it happened. There was a weird growling noise that started in the closet near my parents' bed from across the room. It was guttural and deep, with a gravelly sense to it, so I am not sure it was a growl, but it is the best way to describe it. Now the closet was always closed out of habit, but the door was now creaked open just a bit. I was a little nervous at this point, 
but the house is old and I'm not a pansy. Maybe it's the hot water heater and someone just accidentally put their shirt in the closet and forgot to close it. The growl kind of turns into this weird note. Not like singing, but a piano key sort of tone, but continuous. Now I was scared and looking at the closet, and then something shifts out of the door. It is midday on a Saturday, and I am wide awake, haven't fallen asleep. It is not sleep paralysis. It's not me accidentally seeing something. I hope it was my brain having a one-time hallucination, but it would be the only one I would ever have. This is real, and it's super, super scary because it didn't give any warning and was in a place I found to be safe and secure. A place I had felt comfortable in since I was a little girl of not even five years old. It looked as black as night. Blacker than that. The type of black you can't even describe because it's not even a color anymore. It's just an absence of everything. It's the color I wonder if blind people see because it's literally the color of nothing. Its form looked like a person sitting in a lotus flower position, only its back was broken. So the head was hanging to the right side and the top of its head was touching its knee. It looked cartoonish almost because it was literally bent in half. The bottom half was a lotus flower position and the top half was just the rest of that form bent to be almost upside down but still attached to the body. It made no sense. Looking at it almost hurt my brain. It was like looking at a real life glitch. It had no eyes nor any other recognizable feature just its form, and that color that wasn't even a color. It creeped out of the closet halfway, but it moved and yet didn't, almost like your eyes are playing tricks on you. I wanted to rub my eyes to see if I was just completely nuts, but human instinct told me to not take my eyes off this thing. You know when you are scared of the closet door, so you just stare at it hard enough that you think it's opening and you have to do a double take? That is how it looked when it moved, like it was, but wasn't at the same time. It was only there for a split moment with that damn tone ringing in my ears before it moved back and shut the door. It happened so fast I only really registered the click of the closet door shutting rather than its movements, which still to this day really creeps me out. It was like it was never there or never supposed to be there, and somehow I saw it. And yet, I didn't. The entire encounter, which couldn't have lasted longer than three or four seconds tops, had me frozen in fear. I cannot describe the level of terror seeing this. I have been through a lot in my life, but nothing was as horrifying as that. I finally found my legs and ran straight upstairs and became an absolute mess. I refused to sleep downstairs and would sleep upstairs with all lights on though that didn't help me feel better because I saw it with the lights on. It's been around four years now, and I still have to sleep with a nightlight and the barricade on any closet door with whatever I have handy to ensure they do not open. I sleep with the door to my bedroom closed and my phone resting close to me. It takes me a long time to go to sleep, and I can't sleep alone anymore. It has really effed me up. I saw something my brain half couldn't comprehend. It was like staring at something so outside my field of understanding my brain just went, uh, and filled in the blanks. It was such a strange thing. But what I saw was my brain's interpretation of it, not actually what I saw. I can't accurately describe what I saw because it's like trying to describe a color you've never seen. I really don't know what it was, and hope to everything in my being, I never, ever see anything like it again. I'd seen weird stuff before, like my deceased grandfather standing in a doorway appearing alive, well, happy, and dressed in a very snazzy white suit, but I would just blink and whatever ghost I saw would be gone. 
I would just chalk it up to a momentary brain fart and move along. One night in 2005, though, when I was 18, I was chatting with some friends on AOL Instant Messenger. Remember those days? I told them I'd BRB and went out the back door to get my CD collection out of my car. Remember those days? It was around midnight with clear skies and a near full moon and good illumination. I wasn't the least bit scared or nervous because I had done this literally hundreds of times before. My mind wasn't on anything the least bit supernatural. After I grabbed my CD case, I turned around to head back in when I saw her standing there near the garage at the front corner of my house. She was about 35, attractive brunette with light blue eyes, wearing an 80s era peach colored nightgown. Her body was facing away from the house and she had to crane her neck at an uncomfortable angle to watch me. She kept playing with her necklace. She was giving me this maternal admonishing look like when a child disappoints its mother. If it wasn't for this slight, otherworldly glow to her, I would have thought she was a crazy neighbor. I thought, I'm seeing shit. I'll just blink and she won't be there anymore. Wrong. She was still there, eyes fixed on me, playing with that necklace. I walked to the edge of our property line, about 12 feet away from her, and slowly made my way back to the back door. She never changed the orientation of her body. She just rotated her head like a sentry gun to keep me in her sights. She followed me with her eyes until I ducked behind the back corner of my house. When I got to my back door, I locked it up, shut the curtains, and proceeded to tell my AIM Bettys about what I had seen, adrenaline pumping through my veins to the point it was difficult to type. I don't believe in ghosts but I've never had a 30-second hallucination before or since either. I can't explain her away. I hope these spooky tales gave you a nice little scare. Please like and subscribe, and I will be back with more tales of mysteries and oddities soon. Stay spooky!